All right, so we now we have our just our basic type of SQL query that's going on here with the structured query language. What we should be able to do is get some simple comments in there. If I was to do a forward slash, would that work? No, that's not going to work. What about two forward slashes? No, that doesn't work. Well, if I wanted to comment out the entire block here, what I could do is I could do a forward slash star, and then at the end here of my query, I could do another forward slash star, and then everything I typed after that would be executable. So let's just say here that I wanted to do this underneath that. See how the blue and the red and the black. So now if I was to run this right here, only one query comes back because I commented out an entire block of information. See that? Now, let's just say here that I wanted to do a comment specifically here. How would I go about doing that? Well, the tick is usually within SQL where you put in a variable. Okay? And when we're doing dynamic programming using web programming, what are we not going to allow the user to do? The user, hopefully, my goodness, hopefully they do not see this SQL statement. Right? What are we going to ask the user to provide us in, ever, in order to give them back that dynamic record that they're in search of? What are we going to ask? A string, right? A variable. And in this particular case, we know what field we're going to allow them to search. That's going to be the what? Username, Username right? And then now, what we're going to do is we're going to put a text box out on our web page that says username equals txt username dot value or something like that out there on our web form. Real quick. When you move to a new line there, I get the brackets that follow the, <clears throat> get the two uh, um, minus boxes. How do I, how did you get to the, to the fresh line? I'm assuming you just did it. Enter. And then I should be able to just you know, copy and paste. And for our particular purposes here, the four slash star, four slash star, anything inside of that, it doesn't matter if it's 100,000, you know, carriers returns in there, anything inside that would be commented out until you close that tag. All right, so let's keep on trucking here. So inside of our magical local host here, Let's go back over to the Firefox. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to play a little bit with one of the specific instances that we have here. And I want you to just follow along with me the best that you possibly can. Our particular case here, this one that we're going to do is it's kind of neat, actually, the way that we'll go through and play with it. Uh, We'll actually do some interesting information here with uh, hacking the web applications. And although a lot of times they actually will enforce certain security policies, they are vulnerable to a bunch of different types of attacks. So first things first, we're going to go through and we're going to play with this cars right here. Okay, So follow along with me here. Uh, one thing that we probably should test out is going to be the connectivity between machines here later on in the afternoon because we'll go we'll go after each other's sites and see if we can get on it. But DNS, we don't have any DNS in here, so we'll have to type in IP addresses. Okay. Hopefully you guys don't mind doing that. So for our first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do this trick called parameter tampering. Anybody ever heard of parameter tampering tampering before? So parameter tampering is a type of attack that involves manipulations of 
parameters exchanged between a client and a server in order to modify application data like user credentials, permissions, price, and quantity of products. So what we're going to do is we'll go through and follow along with me here. We're going to do a demo. Right here on the home page. Everybody here? On the home page? We're going to assume that you are not a member and that you don't have a login for the site right here. We're going to tamper with the parameters by entering a bunch of keywords called the trial and error method. Trial and error method. First, we're going to go through, click on blog right here. And over here in the search, click on car one. So I'm typing car one over here. And then click search. So this type of parameter tampering can be used by attackers and identity thieves to obtain personal or business information. Blog, going blog. So check it out. Car one is equal to two thousand or twenty thousand here. Now let's tamper with the parameters. So what do I mean by tampering with the parameters? Where where do you see parameters here? Cars, price. Okay, cars and price. Where do we see that? Right in the middle of the screen. Okay. But where else do we see it? Hot topics. Where's that at? Uh, bottom left. Okay, yeah. Okay. Where else? Oh, where are we for Parameter tampering. Interviews. Interviews? Right here? Right here? No? No? Oh, right here. So in our particular case here, it does not. It does not. Parameter tampering has nothing to do with anything that you see right here on the page. Look up in the URL. See how it's passing the ID equal car one? So we're not logged in right now, yet we're able to see that there's a parameter that's being passed back to the server. Right? So now, based off of our structured query language that you just knew from there, what can we assume? Yeah. It is an attribute for car one, but also car one is something that's in the data store that could be searched upon, right? Well, what if we were to try car two? So there we go. We're not using the search engine. We're going through and going through and seeing what cars are available here. Car three is 80,000. And it's pretty easy to, to do parameter tampering in this particular case right here. Well, how does that work? How does this work? Well, let's take a look at this for a second. So look at localhost cars search exp.x right so over here in our www root we want to go to cars and then search asp.x so if i just come over here and i just say edit and i take a look at this right here There's a bunch of things down here, but what did I do? You guys remember what I did to, to start the magic here? What did I do? Cars1 hit enter. Was that here on the search.axp.x? No, right? That was over here at this other site called Blog, right? Blog had something in it called search. So I look for the search parameter in the blog here. And if I do like a right click and search, I can look that here. Look at this. 
text box ID, text box, run at the server, whatever I put into the, the text box in between these parameters here. So then look, when the button is clicked, when button one here, which is the search button, that has a text box tied to it, is clicked, what does it do? Well, in ASP.X, it has this little C-sharp code that's behind it. Look at this right here. C-sharp code. I'll just look at this right here. What was the name of that field? Anybody remember? So look at this. Button click one. If text box length is less than one, what's that mean? If it's null, then don't do anything. Else, response redirect and pass the ID to the search.asp.x page with textbox.1. What does that mean? Take the value and submit it. Yeah! Just take the value, redirect it to that search.asp.x page, and push it into that query. So then from that, it actually will reload that search.aspx, pass a parameter to it, the ID equal whatever. So you could actually circumvent that by doing this parameter tampering. Does that make sense? So here we go with the first type of web attack. That's going to be the parameter tampering. And this is going to be very, very similar to some of the other ones that we're going to do, like with SQL injection here. Okay? So keep that in mind as we go through and do that. Oops.